Today I'm looking at a 1954 Bentley R-Type. My name's Mike Thacker. I work in sales here at Sabetti Motors. You can see this car at 5636 South Tacoma Way in Tacoma, Washington. Well, what I have here is a really fine example of a Mark 7 Bentley. This model was produced from 1952 to 1955. Roughly 23,000 units were produced of those 23,000. About 300 were made with handmade coachwork. And that's a significant point because prior to World War II and just after, you would have bought a high-end car like a Bentley or a Rolls-Royce. Uh, what you were buying was a rolling chassis. You'd get the engine, you'd get the suspension, everything from the dash forward, but no body. So you'd go into the dealership, and the dealer would offer you a choice of five or six coach builders to choose from to build the car to your specifications. Well, that changed after World War II. In 1946, the British government uh, said politely, more, more so of a mandate to Rolls-Royce and Bentley and others, uh, look, uh, we'd like you to come up with a standard body, a pressed steel body, and that way uh, we can send these cars abroad and bring in some of that money from the United States and other countries to help rebuild our country because of the post-World War II, World War II destruction. And so that's what happened. And in 1946, the model prior to this, the Mark VI Bentley, became the first model with the all-steel body. Now, Rolls-Royce acquired Bentley in 1931. The company itself, the Bentley Company, was started in 1919 by Walter Owen Bentley. He had no intention of selling out to Rolls-Royce. They were rivals. But Walter Bentley, an engineer by trade, started out as an apprentice with the Great Northern Railway in England as an engineer, and by 1919 had designed his own engine for his own car. Now, over the course of the 1920s, the Bentley Mark uh, had become quite well known. Uh, they were winning races uh, at Le Mans uh, from 1924 to 1930 when uh, W.O. said, look, um, I've done everything I wanted to do with racing. I really want to concentrate on building a, a, what they would call a saloon. And that would be the type of uh, cars we're looking at here, something that you could drive across the continent of Europe at a high rate of speed and in comfort. So there began the idea of the luxury sedan for W.O. Bentley. In 1929, the worldwide uh, depression that was caused by the stock market crash in the United States um, affected everybody, including the sales volume with the Bentley Company, and the government of England had put the Bentley in a receivership. Rolls-Royce won the bid for the company with a sealed bid, and uh, they did so underneath a uh, different name than Rolls-Royce. It was uh, a secret to uh, W.O., who actually bought the company until all of the paperwork was said and done. And to his shock, uh, he was purchased along with the <laughs> buildings and the rights to manufacture the car. And he actually worked for Rolls-Royce until 1935. Uh, and uh, his heart just wasn't into the whole thing. And he went to work for a company called Lagonda, which was later taken over by David Brown, um, who was well known uh, for um, being the financial backer and purchaser of Aston Martin. But anyway, it, it had always been a problem with uh, W.O. Bentley as far as <clears throat> building his cars. He loved building cars. He just didn't know how to control the purse strings, and the company was always fighting for uh, its financial, financial survival since its beginning. Well, they built cars from 1921 to 1931. When Rolls took over the company, the two Marks were essentially sharing the same chassis, same engine. But again, the, the really important factor happened in 1946 when uh, they started sharing the same standard steel bodywork. 
So you could buy this uh, look-alike body here from 1946 to 51. It had a smaller trunk in 52. They enlarged that area. In the 1952 through 55 series, uh, the option of an automatic transmission became possible. One source that I read said that the company was sourcing the transmissions. They were hydromatics uh, from General Motors. And uh, what I'm going to do now is start this car. Here's a push button start and you've got a little lever there you turn that to on you turn that to on like so Uh, inside, what you get is uh, real wood on the dash. That trim follows the doors as the window surrounds. It looks to me like these front seats have been recovered. I'm not sure if it's an auger hide or some type of a leatherette. Uh, there is a little bit of fine wear on there as if when you buy a new pair of shoes you get that light cracking. I think more so in the back, I would say that this back seat area is, is true leather, possibly the original leather in here. There's a little mirror on each side there. On this side here, there's a cigarette lighter up near that mirror. And I had a question when I opened the door. I said, what are these round things on the armrests here? Well, they're ashtrays. They pull straight out. The doors themselves looks to be original leather. Uh, what you've got here, you've got the drop down trays. One on each side. The headliner's in fine condition. No work needed there. All of these cars from 1946 to 55, they came with the sunroof. It's the same body as I mentioned before. The spare tire is underneath there. It's on the bottom part of the floor of the trunk. Uh, you've got a jack in there. You've got a hydraulic jack and a crank. Uh, looking at the sides, it's hard to see behind the panels in here. What they have is kind of a soundproofing vinyl panel, but I did not notice any rust, uh, any obvious rust around the edges of the trunk. And that would include the trunklet itself. Now this car has been repainted once, I'm pretty sure just once. They did make sure that they got uh, you know, all the door jams and uh, What's been used on this is an enamel paint. You can get a high gloss shine off of that. All the original rims are on the car. Somebody asked me what's this one time. That's what you call air conditioning. A little vent opens up there. You got a lever on the inside of the car. Air conditioning Bentley style. Again down this side too. Nice condition all the way around. Same way here. I've looked at some of these cars listings on the internet earlier today. This is a common thing I was seeing. What happens is this paint kind of flakes off in spots. It can be touched up. 
But when I was looking at the price prices, there is a range, and for twenty thousand dollars, you can get pretty much a rust bucket, meaning the paint is gone. And we've got this priced at twenty-three thousand. Now I've seen them uh, in nicer shape. We're talking thirty-five to fifty thousand dollars if that's what you like to spend on a car. I'm sure you can find something out there for the, like in that price range. Um, offering this one, like I said, under twenty-three thousand uh, dollars. You can find still photos of this car at www.sabettimotors.com. You can contact me directly at two five three seven five two nine four nine four. My name is Mike Thacker. Phone or text. Car runs on gas. I'm sure premium would be my choice on a car like this. Again, 1954 Bentley R type. Mileage around $71,000. Oh, excuse me, 71,000 miles. <laughs> uh, this car has drum brakes all around. They're hydraulic in the front, mechanical in the back. Uh, this is an automatic transmission. Another uh, significant point on this car because uh, once these cars, uh, Bentley started introducing automatics in this series, they stopped producing cars from there forward with a manual transmission. It was not an option. Uh, up to this point, you had an option of getting the manual transmission in the 1950s, or you could get an automatic. Prior to this series, the Mark VI, all four speed manuals on the column. So historically it does have some interesting points to it. And the price is right, 23,000. We take trades, we take cash. I had a fellow today tell me he could finance this, so there's lots of options for you to get in a really beautiful luxury cruiser. 1954 Bentley R-Type. Again, my name, Mike Thacker. Telephone, text, 253-752-9494. I'd welcome a chance to work with you. Thanks.